Welcome, everybody, to Taskmaster. The show is called Taskmaster, and I am Jeremy Wells. And I am the Taskmaster. I just welcomed you to a show and to myself. A few months ago, I set five comedians a series of novel and, at times, frustrating tasks. They attempted to do them. We filmed them with cameras. And tonight, I will judge them on what they did and how they did it. The winner, at the end of one gruelling season, will receive my head, <laughs> immortalised as a statue and made slightly less golden than the real thing. <laughs> Let's meet our competitors. They're the same people as every week, but I'll say their names because they like it when people clap. They are Angela Dravage. <laughs> Brinley Stent. <laughs> Guy Williams. <laughs> Lee Hart. <laughs> and Madeline Sami. <laughs> as always, I am joined and assisted by the man who refuses to live in the shadow of his more famous siblings, Guy, Venus and Serena. It's Paul Williams. I'm feeling really good tonight. Last episode, I found out I got extremely thirsty, so they actually customised my jacket with a hydration system. OK. Is that coming out? Uh, so that just goes into there. I've got a chocolate milkshake. Wow. Oh. Just built in there. That wouldn't be and my just... first choice of drink, chocolate milkshake. No, neither. I'm vanilla guy, so I've got that on the <laughs> side. Which is just there. <laughs> Paul was present for the recording of all the tasks at our top secret Taskmaster Ranch, being my eyes on the ground, enforcing my rules, and generally bringing down the vibe on set. <laughs> just doing as I was told. Yeah, well, <laughs> would you like to explain our first task, please, Paul? Our first task is a prize task. Each competitor has donated something to the prize hall. The taskmaster will decide who has done it the best, and the person with the most points at the end of the show will win all five things. Tonight, they were asked to bring in the least useful item. OK, let's dig in and examine our hall. Uh, Guy, we're going to start with you. I bought the smoke alarm from the Sky City Convention Center. <laughs> Ruined New Zealand, that smoke alarm. So, is it actually the smoke alarm? It's the smoke alarm. Is, is it just it. a smoke alarm that you've burnt? No, no, it's the smoke alarm. I got it at a police auction. <laughs> I was trying to win another useless invention, David Bain's gun safe. <laughs> but I got the smoke alarm instead. OK, Angela, what did you bring along? I bought in a chapstick um, <laughs> for your... <laughs> You brought um, along chapstick for, for your, your... labia. Labia. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's just a... I think it's strawberry scented. <laughs> Nothing worse than chap lips, um, Jimmy. You know, <laughs> yeah, you really don't want to get a dap. What's, What's a, a dap? dap? A dry ass pussy. So <laughs> <laughs> something like that is really good to have. Should we move on from this? Yeah. <laughs> Mads, what did you bring in? So, Roomba, I call my one Roombot, but it's useless because it acts like it's really useful because it says, I am a vacuum that can go around automatically and you don't have to do the work. But the batteries don't last and they die in really inconvenient places and then you can't find them. Like, we literally lost ours for months. Well, I've, I feel like it might be user error. Maybe it's trying to escape you because you're a bad owner. <laughs> Lee, what did you bring in? Well, <laughs> Angela might enjoy my one, actually. This could be quite helpful. Um, so we've got this, this nozzle spray thing, which How I've got... How dry do you think my pussy is? <laughs> <laughs> That's got mist, it's got soaker, it's got jet, it's got Those spray. Those are the same settings I have. <laughs> <laughs> and it plugs in, but I can only kind of hose stuff in this kind of... Vicinity. You'd think that if you did attach another hose to that, though, it could be incredibly useful. Well, that's... Uh, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Brinley. Hi. I bought in um, a condom with the end cut off. It, it was useful, though, wasn't it? But you sabotaged it. Yeah, so now it is the least useful thing. But, I mean, you could just bring in a car and just smash up the engine with a baseball bat and then yeah, be like... you bought in a fire alarm. That was once useful as well. It was not useful because the building burned down. <laughs> Read the news, educate yourself. I also don't believe that yours is from the actual fire. Oh, here comes the allegations now. <laughs> I reckon she, she sabotaged that condom. I reckon she burned down the Sky City Convention <laughs> Centre. 
OK, maybe stop squibbling. I might as well judge this one. I mean, whoever wins this tonight has got to take home some absolute <laughs> pile of shit. <laughs> it's got to be said. So three points for everyone, and Mads, you get one point. Oh. Because, for, man, look, that, that rumba is aspirational for a lot of our viewers. OK, cool, man. Buy one. Let, let's talk later. Let's talk after you've had it for a couple of months. It will haunt you. <laughs> it's quite scary when she does that. OK, so that puts four people in first place. <laughs> Lee, Guy, Brinley and Angela, all with three points. OK. How are we the following All right. Is it time for the first task? It most definitely is. And this one should appeal to all, but mainly to all the dendrophiles out there. I'm coming. Why are you so far away? Don't film this bit. Hello, Angela. Hello. This feels like The Bachelor. Why don't I start all the way over there? We, we needed a tree. No, no, no. Yeah. Make this tree sexy. Sexiest tree wins. How am I going to make a tree sexy? It's already sexy. In many ways. I, I mean, I often think that the sexiest thing is something being turned on by itself. You know what I mean? Are you with me? Not really. Yeah, maybe some lipstick. Or... No, that didn't really show up. I think I made out with a tree. <laughs> so what's the uh, sexiest tree you've ever seen, Paul? A pahutakawa in bloom set to the song of the Tui. Mm. <laughs> Sounds very alluring. Should we have a look at some uh, flora? We shall. Up first, his name rhymes with tree bark, it's Lee Hart. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah. um, people tend to downstairs maybe a little bit more. Do we have a weed eater? <laughs> Like, I don't want to overdo it, as I say, it's not the 70s, but I could get trendy again, having a little bit down there. As you might want to check this out, I'll um, take, take you through what I've got for myself. I have the one and only Selma Hayek. She's an angel. She certainly is. And that's, I mean, I, I could leave it at that, and for me, that's, that's done <laughs> enough. The obvious thing would be to put that there. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it around here instead, Paul. Um, Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> this is for the ladies, lady viewers. There you go. It's not going anywhere. And finally, what I'd probably do, seeing you brought the guitar. It's a little song I wrote a few years back myself. Why? <laughs> That's all I can do legally, because they'll rip us off with the music if I do much want that. But uh, what do you think? Chris didn't get a lot of the song. No, but as I say, that's, it's, it's an option. It's an option. You mentioned something about leaving a little bit uh, for the 70s, but I assume that nobody was trimming anything in the 1970s. Well, that's exactly right. If we, if we were doing the show in the 70s, I would have probably been bringing in stuff <laughs> and, and, and piling it around the tree, you know. And this, this is not from memory, of course. I'm not old enough to remember that, uh, other than my parents. Have, uh, God, where am I going with this? <laughs> All right, so who do we go to next, Paul? Up next is Angela. And I'd like to make this very clear. I am contractually obligated to play this video, and I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Take your pants off. <laughs> and, like, grind up against it like it's mint. Like it's what? I don't know what else you grind. OK, I'm going to squirt oil on you. <laughs> it went in my mouth a little bit. These are kind of hurting. OK, maybe you can take them off. <sighs> maybe, like, put this on, though. Control. Oh. I guess, like, smear it all over your body. The chocolate? Yeah, like, sexy. <laughs> <sighs> it looks like you're doing... Functional. Yeah, misappropriation. <laughs> Okay, I think that's I think that's sexy. 
Angela, did you make the tree sexy or did you just make Paul sexy? I think the tree was sexy. I would argue that when someone goes to a strip club, they don't leave thinking, <laughs> wow, those poles. <laughs> what if it's a Polish bar? <laughs> How are your nipples? They've recovered. I kissed them better. I'm starting to get concerned about the story arc that's starting to develop yeah. between you two. Anyone else yeah. with yeah. me on this? I wasn't going to bring it up, Jeremy. I'm glad you did this. I need that chapstick. <laughs> I don't I think, think you, you do. needed the chapstick. <laughs> Would you like to see more? I'd gladly look at more of either. <laughs> Thankfully, the next one is a tree. Here's Brinley Stent. Sexy. And if you don't agree with me, then you're a fucking sexist. Do you want to be a sexist, Jeremy Wells? I told you before, Brinley, I will not be threatened. Although, like all sane men in the current climate, I will be awarding you with maximum points, <laughs> no matter what my true feelings may be. <laughs> I think that's a wise decision. Who should we go to next, Paul? This next attempt is one from Madeline, who is making a direct play for the Taskmaster's heart with this very sexy attempt. Sexy? Sexy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you think you can hit this one? Well, you probably can't, you silly bloody kiwi, <laughs> sexy kiwi bloody cricketer. <laughs> Here we go, you bloody sexy kiwi. Six off the last ball, good luck. <laughs> Won't see my tail light. A very bold assumption, Mads, that my love of cricket actually arouses me. <laughs> but it does, so that actually paid off. I can't believe that we're going to put that on television, because for me that's essentially pornography, what I saw there. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. She was very method in the role. Like, even when they weren't filming, she stayed in character, and that character's name was Brett Shane Brett. <laughs> I figured what's, like, the most Aussie name you could come up with. And I thought, Brett. And then I thought, Shane. And I thought, why not double Brett? Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we've almost seen enough sexy stuff, although I believe Guy's still to come. Unfortunately, yes. I'd like to make this very clear again that I'm contractually obligated <laughs> to play this. And I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm Guy, and this is my uh, sexy tree. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the best I could do. I mean, I, I'm not looking at it, but I think it looks almost identical, but you're just in it naked. Yeah, and I'm the sexiest man on TV Guide, sexiest man on Box 2014, so... OK. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, Paul. Do you need help? A little bit, yeah. You could argue that by you being nude in a tree, you actually made the tree look sexy by your comparison to it. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that. I'll take that. It, it took less than a minute for him to, to settle on that idea. Um, and unfortunately, Guy's process was not as simple as one would have liked. Here's some exclusive behind the scenes footage. Oh. <laughs> it's going to be a sexy as hell tree. I'm going to go full nude. I feel like I have to to make it sexy. I can turn around. If... Yeah, turn around. Okay. Everyone turn around. There's nowhere to take my pants off. Paul, I don't want to ask you for too much help, but can you help peel my underwear off while I hold my genitals? Okay, yeah. should I close my eyes? Yeah, I reckon. Just come around the tree. And just help pull down my pants. Yeah, that's my leg. Just that's come a out here and pull down, my, pull down my pants. Which leg is this, right or left? That's the right leg. Come a bit higher, higher, higher. Yeah, there we go. Just give it a yank. Yeah. All right. 
that the first time you've ever pulled down your brother's undies? Yes. And, and definitely the last time. I can't remember doing that. I've, like, blacked out. <laughs> I think if I saw a naked man in a tree, I'd call the police. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. I'd be like, there's a man who looks like Guy Williams possibly masturbating in a tree. <laughs> Well, there's no masturbation happens. Were you oh, masturbating in that trap? No, that she's house. just adding in weird details. Was he masturbating in that trap? I can't confirm or deny. Um, I had my no, eyes honestly, covered. he may have got more points if he did. <laughs> OK. Brinley, you're going to get five points cos I'm fearful of some kind of feminist reprisal. Thank you. Uh, Madeline, wise. I think you should get four points. Thank you. Because you actually made a 14-year-old teetoki hit the ball out of the middle of the bat, which is quite sensational. Guy, three points for your commitment to nudity inside of a tree. Thank I like you. that. Lee, two points for copyright infringement. We can't have that going yeah. forward on the show. And Angela, one point. Nita, I don't even want to talk more about what happened between you and Paul. It was sexy. <laughs> I feel like after all that, it must be scoreboard time, Paul. Yes, Brinley out in front with eight points. Ooh. But it's pretty tight. Guy's just two points behind on six. All right. Do you know, I've already got more points than I got in the whole last game, so I'm nailing it. It might be your night tonight. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Probably won't be, but still it <laughs> might be. What have you got for me now, Williams? Another task, I suppose? Correct, Wells. Uh, and it's the first team task. Oh. And while that last one was very horny, this one is very brassy. Stop doing puns about tasks before anyone knows what the task is. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't even know what that last one meant. Uh, let's just watch it. Paul, how are you? Good, thank you. Oh, Hi, Paul. Me. Tuba? Uh-huh. Grapes? Takes me back. It takes you back to when? Oh, back to, back to my, my orchestra days. How's it going? <laughs> Guys. Nice to see you, Bryn. Good to see you too. How are you? Very good. Nice outfit. Thank you. This is my costume. This is my costume. Damn, you all you kick the shit out of me. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to spend a bit of time um, in the orchestra. <laughs> ah. Hey. Hey, how are you going? You're, you're in on this as well. Yeah. Oh, I must see a group challenge. Oh! Wow! Hey. <laughs> You two look great, great together. You look like you're about to do a We're double act. We're in love. Wow. Yeah, thank you. OK. Um, well, you better open up. I'm a huge fan, by the way. Oh, same? Yeah. Oh. Of myself? No, no, no. Yeah. Of yours. No, yeah. you're yeah. great. Should we do the task? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to open it? I'm going to open it and you yeah. can read it. OK. Catch a grape with this tuba from the furthest distance. You may not throw the grape. Your distance will be measured from the first grape successfully caught. Bonus points available for playing a lovely song on the tuba or catching the grape. You have 20 minutes. Your time starts now! Can we see the first team? Let's. Here's Lee and Angela. Can you play? I'll give it a go, yeah. Hang on, I can try to do the finger. Oh, yeah, thing. okay. <laughs> Okay, I think we'll be right on the tune aspect. Yeah. Um, it's just catching the grape now, so you can't throw it. We need to um, eject it somehow. Oh, I can catapult it. Yes. Like. Yes. Um, I can't see anything in here. That would you use? Um, um... I've got a balloon. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. The balloon. Oh here. yeah. It's a bit tight. Okay. Is there more balloons? Yep. So what's the plan? Oh, we're going to make a catapult with the deer antlers, balloons, clearly, and um, shoot the grapes into the, the tuba, you see, before you. So you, you can... Whoa! Wow. Yeah, you should practice. That's beautiful. I think I'll catch the, the grape first, then I'll, then I'll break into two. Oh, yeah. That went in. OK, let's go further back. No, that went in. That went in? Yes. But the longest distance, let's keep going for further. What does the task say? Your distance will be measured from the first grape successfully caught. Oh. Ah! OK, well, it's not a bad distance. I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, bonus points available for playing a lovely song on the tuba while catching the grape. So I'll finish the song now, because that yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. it's one of those songs that has a bit of a break in the chorus. <laughs> One of 
those songs that has a bit of a break in the chorus. Yeah, no, normally you have the instrumental break. We did the break from the instrumental, so to speak, <laughs> and, and, and did that later on. Because yeah. <laughs> how much of the process were you involved in? It seems like you weren't involved in a lot of it. I know, it seems that way, but I came up with the catapult and the balloon, yeah. and he had the antler and the tuba. And I also did the fingering. <laughs> I'd like to think I did some of the fingering as well. <laughs> I'd like to move on to the second oh, I think team. we should, yeah. So we've seen a dynamic duo. It's time to move on to the three Tasketeers. Brinley, Madeline, and Guy. We could fling it with a slingshot. But I'm like, if we catapult it, would that be more accurate, or...? Yeah, catapult it. Catapult it or hit, or hit it. We need distance. Should we go out in the field? Yeah, yeah. let's go out in the field. And get some stuff to launch I'll take it. the grapes. <laughs> I'm pretty good! <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one doing any work on this. It'll be like... <laughs> All right, we're... We're all having a great laugh. <laughs> I'm trying to win the goddamn competition. Okay, if I just throw it like that, is that allowed? I think that's a throw. Why don't we yeah. tie this and then we can hoof it? Oh, it's like your slingshot idea. Yeah, I'm ready, bitches. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. Am I being too optimistic standing here? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, you are, yes. I'm just putting the tuba down for a second because I just want to see if I can just smack one. Good idea. I'm glad you're here. Oh, hold the tuba! Oh, she got a hold of that one. If you get the middle of the spade. Yeah. Do I play and then catch? Is that how this works? So yeah, you're going to play and catch. OK, ready? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Come on, Brad! Hey! Did we get a win? I think so. We are the champions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, I was genuinely impressed with the teamwork there. You two farted around and made Guy do all the heavy lifting. Yeah. We completely abandoned what I was doing, and then they did the whole thing. <laughs> And I took the credit. Classic man. <laughs> Is there any reason why we didn't have to censor Brinley's amazing rendition of We Are The Champions? I mean, I don't know. Was, was that We Are The Champions? I was trying. We don't have it by any chance, do we? No, we don't. But we do have an audio clip of the tune she was playing as she caught the grape. OK. Whoa. Would you like wow. to hear that? I'd love to hear okay. that. OK. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. That's really that good. Like a, that sounds like a pig snuffling around in a trough. <laughs> <laughs> but it was something. I mean, you, it's not an easy task. You've got to concentrate on a few things. It's not easy. W would you like to know their distance? Yes, please. OK, so the first team, three metres, Brinley, Guy and Madeline, scraped ahead by 99 centimetres and an additional 10 metres. Yeah! <laughs> But I'm going to score it this way. Mads, if you hit it out in the middle of a spade, Thank you. that's not easy. Currently, great piece of work catching it and playing something as well. Thank Guy, you. didn't do much, but you attempted to help a little bit. Five <laughs> points for you guys and uh, three points for you guys because you got it in there yep. and that's not easy either. <laughs> now what? Four? Another task, I suppose? I don't see why not. Or as they say in Mexico, Tarea. Where's Paul? Where's Paul? Where's Paul? <laughs> Clear the mind. Clear the mind. <laughs> Pack this piñata. Hello? <laughs> With the most surprising filling. You have five minutes to plan and 20 minutes to fill the piñata. Your time starts now. Where's Paul when you need him? OK, my first thought was I'm going to take a shit into the piñata. That was the first thing that came to my mind. And uh, unfortunately, I don't need to use the bathroom right now, so that's kind of out. The main issue is actually getting it in there. I don't see any kind of hole. Wait, how do you, how do you fill the piñata? Like, is there a... Is that part of the track? What was that martial arts move that you pulled on the empty piñata, Lee? It's, it's just... It's a clearing of the mind. 
It's a martial art thing I used to do a few years back in my um, Jodo. Your what? Do dojo? Dojo? My dojo, sorry. <laughs> actually, Joe used to run it. My dojo. Jo <laughs> jo Joe ran the dojo. Yeah. How do you actually fill the pinata? Uh, well, there was a very simple trapdoor on the, the belly of the pinata, but reviewing the footage, four of the five contestants did attempt to fill it through its non existent anus. <laughs> I can't wait to see that, and I can't wait to be surprised by these surprising things, but first, we're going to fill three minutes with some surprising ads. We'll see you very soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Taskmaster, currently the number one show to feature sexy trees, airborne grapes, and what now, Paul Williams? Our contestants are trying to surprise me with the filling of their piñatas. I was not present for the piñata filling, so what we're about to see are my real authentic, unedited reactions. Truly television at its most raw and powerful. <laughs> Whose pinata filling should we watch first? We've got two fillings with a very similar theme. Here's Guy Williams and Madeline Sami. Welcome to a world of imagination, pleasure and surprise. Here before you is a pinata for you to bash. Some surprising things inside. Can't wait to see the look of surprise on your face, mate. Okay. All right, you're literally flogging a dead horse. Really? Oh, my God. Oh, God, Paul, you're just supposed to smash the pinata, not the things inside of it. Whoa, surprise. So there's lollies. Yeah. What's that in your hand, though? Another pinata. Another pinata inside the pinata inside the pinata. What's that? A pinata. Another pinata inside the pinata. How good. Is that my album? Yeah, you just killed your album, bro. Did you illegally burn that? Maybe. I'm surprised, and I'm the one who did it. Like, how is that even possible? Is there anything else in here? They're little mini pinatas. You'd know that if you hadn't bashed them to smithereens. It was pregnant. Twins. <laughs> so you're happy with how it went? Well, to be fair, you are like, going out of your way to hide your emotion. But I know you. Speaking to the camera now, mm. I've known Paul his whole life. He doesn't show many emotions. And isn't that just typical of Kiwi males these days? They don't show what's on the inside, you know? They don't let their heart bleed. But I know when I saw Paul there, that was as surprised as he's ever been in his entire life. Oh, surprise. <laughs> this is about men's mental health awareness. Get out there, get yourself checked. Kikaha. God defend New Zealand. Thank you, Guy. Thanks, Paul. I don't think anyone has ever done less for men's mental health awareness than you. Go out there and get yourself checked. Yeah. If anything, I've made the situation worse for a lot of men. Guy, you put lollies inside of your pinata. Yeah. It's not very surprising, really, lollies inside of a pinata. No, that's no, no, what no. pinata. It was pinata inception, guys. There was a pinata, inside there was a smaller pinata, inside that there was another pinata, inside that was another pinata, inside that was a lolly. Is it? Is that not blowing people's mind right now? I like it. Whoa! I feel like you're slightly over-exaggerating how many pinatas there were. Whoa! I'm amazed! Also, I did the pinata within the pinata as well, so mm. it po possibly wasn't as much of a surprise, depending on who was... I, I did see Madeline's first. Whose <laughs> oh. <laughs> pinatas are next? Up next, we're heading to Sunny LA, which stands for Sunny Lee Angela. <laughs> Oh, get out, mate! Hello, Lee. So you have to pull the tail. There's like an arrow thing there. Oh, OK. I'm kind of hoping you can maybe get underneath it. OK. And, and kind of even lying down there would be, would be quite good for me. More what I might do, that's also a Mexican thing. I might head over here and give you a bit of a soundtrack. OK. Pull me. How hard? Uh, just keep pulling. Down? Yeah, that's one. Is that a pizza? Yeah. And a Christmas cracker? Yeah. It's like turmeric or something, like some yeah. sort of spice. And a bit of flour. It's supposed to be like sort of a chili kind of pepper. Vegetarian spinach. 
Yeah. Are you vegetarian? No. I was hoping for an effect where, to be honest with you, you're actually going to get doused in the in the flour and the, the turmeric. But um, I think you get the idea. Why did no one bid for Rudolph and Blitzen on Trade Me? Uh, because they were too dear. What surprises me here, Angela, is that you were able to source a Christmas cracker out of season. That's impressive. The arrow was actually connected to the little string in the Christmas cracker. So when he pulls it, it's supposed to bang. But it got soggy because of the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so it was your idea that you pull the Christmas cracker and the Christmas cracker makes the whole pinata explode? Yeah, um, we don't really celebrate Christmas with Christmas crackers, so I just thought it was a big... <laughs> You're thinking of fireworks. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Inside the Christmas cracker was the first ever Christmas cracker hat to fit my head. Wow. I, I don't know, yeah. It was Sorry, a good quality. Sorry, you look surprised. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I was quite surprised it fit my head. So oh. quite surprised. Oh. Lou, what did you put in your pinata? Basically, I wanted to do a, a bomb type thing, chili and spices that would go in, in Paul's eyes. And, <laughs> and that, even if he wasn't surprised, he would have to have a very surprised, burning kind of look on his face <laughs> as it happened. I think it was turmeric and corn kernels. <laughs> Famously spicy. <laughs> I would say that sort of uh, white person spice. Because <laughs> I would definitely go with a lot more curry powder, masala, and uh, chili. I should have just put diesel in there or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for another pinata. Then another pinata you shall have. Here's Brinley whacking one. Hi, Paul. Hello, Brinley. Yeah, you can just go for it with the cricket bat. Um, I'm just going to stand back. If that's all right with you. No worries. His name is. Um... I'd rather probably you didn't na name him before I hit him with a bat. Okay. I go for it. Hey, good luck, Paul. Thanks, Brinley. Good luck, Fabio. Sorry, I shouldn't have named it. His name's Fabio. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Fabio. Sorry, Brinley. <laughs> Sorry, Fabio. That was truly devastating. Uh, so, a couple of weeks ago, you named a squirrel Sriracha. Yep. Now you've got Fabio the Pinata. Yeah, correct. I feel very sorry for your future children. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that we end up with some sort of food-based or normal name. What exactly was inside your pinata? Um, mints, sausages, and um, some makeshift blood bags. Fake blood. Mm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, my parents are worried about me as well. <laughs> to be honest, I know Brinley, and I wasn't that surprised. <laughs> I'm going to struggle scoring this one because the task is all about surprising Paul, and I don't know if you've noticed, but Paul really shows no emotion in his situation at all. Um, so I'm not really surprised that there's not a lot of surprise coming from Paul and nobody's really able to surprise him. Were you surprised by any of them, maybe? I was surprised at his lack of surprise. <laughs> I'm surprised to hear that. <laughs> but, um, Angela, I think that you do deserve five points. I think that's only fair, because a veggie pizza and a Christmas cracker inside a pinata were quite good. Mads, three points for you. Um, Brinley and Lee get two points each. And Guy, minus one point for doing damage to men's mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, please tell us who is in the lead. Still out in front, Brinley on 15 points. Ooh. Quite tight, though. Madeline's just two points behind on 13. And with that, we head to the stage for our final task of the evening. <laughs> A little bit disappointed that there's no elaborate food props this week, Paul. No gimmicks this week. It's for the task purists out there. Madeline, would you please do me the honour of reading this task? Oh, I would love to do you the honour. <laughs> <laughs> 
So there's been a lot of objectification of Paul, and I just wanted to get in on it, to be honest. OK. Thank you, Paul, you sexy thing. <laughs> Write down a sport, an animal and a colour. You have ten seconds to complete all three. Pins down. Lee was still writing. You were as well. <laughs> yeah, OK, I was too. <laughs> but Lee was more than me. Madeline, would you do me the honour of reading oh. the second task? Oh, I would love to do you the honour. <laughs> uh, smut. All right, here we go. Striker pose to represent, firstly, your sport, then your animal, then your colour. <laughs> the taskmaster will attempt to guess what each pose represents. You may not speak or move once your pose is struck. Most poses correctly guessed by the taskmaster wins. So we're going to start with your sport pose, then animal pose, and then colour pose. Prepare to strike a pose. Angela, wood chopping. No. <laughs> OK. Brindley, gymnastics. Correct. Yes. Guy, basketball. Money, baby. Uh, so what's happened here is Lee's actually left sport blank. <laughs> oh, I ran out of time. I don't know. <laughs> I suppose I'm kind of a couch sport. I mean, he was blank. He was doing nothing. Yeah. Probably a point. Don't give him a point for that! Sorry, he was doing wait, nothing. Wait, wait! I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, this is some disgusting. people don't play sport. This is bullshit. And I think I did a pretty good description of that. <laughs> that's, that's clearly batting. That's cricket. Thank you. Mommy, I mean, can you show me? Like... Show me? And then I was about to play a beautiful just draw. Oh, that's See lovely. See how you did that's that? Lovely. That is lovely. Oh. OK, round two. Your animal. <laughs> a rabbit. Oh, no. <laughs> a cat. Brilliant is clearly a hoi hoi or yellow eyed penguin. Penguin? I'll give it a tip. <laughs> Guy is a bear. Uh oh, tiger, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Lee is a a hairless Tasmanian devil. <laughs> you say Lima? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you're a cat. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, this looks wrong. Pink. Blue. <laughs> it's, it's a balloon. Brindley, it's yellow. Yeah. It's actually mustard. <laughs> Green? Yeah! 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 Rhymes with... No. <laughs> Zip it. Brown. Beige. Oh, darker than that, obviously. Well, you can't talk, so oh. I'm not going to award you any points. The correct answer was black. Black? Yes. OK. Clearly. Madeline, you're red. Thank you. Wow. Great. Anger. Anger. It's anger. Makes you red. All right, it's time to strike another pose. This one is a comfortable sitting pose. Everyone can return down to the stage. <laughs> Welcome back to your seats, everyone. Time to score that round. Firstly, Brinley and Madeline, five points each. Well acted out. Guy, three points. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I asked for that, but I deserved it. Lee, one point. And Fuck. Angela, <laughs> zero. Um, I'd like to strike another pose. Um... <laughs> <laughs> So how does that place everyone for the series, firstly? Uh, it's very tight. In second place, Brinley with 51 points, Ooh. and only half a point ahead, oh. currently leading, is Madeline Sami. <laughs> <laughs> that half point. Half a point. Who knew you could even get half points? Yeah. I didn't. So uh, what does it mean for this episode, then? Uh, that means the winner for this episode, with 20 points, 
Brinley Stent. Ah! There are many takeaways from tonight. We've learnt not to body shame trees, <laughs> as they are sexy just the way they are. We've learnt that a hole on a pinata isn't in the same place as the hole on the donkey. And we've also learned that our deserving champion of episode three is Brinley Stent. <laughs> Congratulations, Brinley. Now make use of your non-useful thing. Go lather up with some labia lipstick and enjoy your haul. We'll see you next week. <laughs>